I'm Drew Paul Bell, and this is actually the first video of two-part video where I'm going to talk about architectural thesis projects. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about what that thesis, how that thesis project is different from your typical studio project. And then in the next video, I'm going to talk about um, my thesis project, just to give you like an example of one, one possibility and to kind of help give you a better perspective about what you could possibly do. Okay, so architecture thesis projects. You're in your typical studio class. You, I think you always have this. You always have this uh, this project that you're working on, where you typically have like we would typically have like ten weeks to do the main project. We'd spend the first six weeks doing like a more minor project, and but the project nonetheless is still given to you, and you have like most of the semester to work on it. And it's kind of this gradual building of. The content and the, the developing of the design and at the end you present that design. The, where, where a thesis project differs from just your typical studio project is one is expected to be higher level obviously because you're in your fifth year but how so? Alright so you're gonna when, when you do your thesis project your thesis project is more about choosing you, you choose the projects you choose the topic, you choose the site, you choose what issues you're going to tackle, and you choose how you're going to go about it, and then you go about it and you do it. Contrast this with your typical studio class. Usually the prompt is given to you, you're given a site, and then you got your whole class goes to the site, you're all doing the same thing, and then you just come up with something for right there. For a thesis, you have to come up with the problem, you have to kind of establish the problem, define that problem, and then you have to come up with a solution for the problem. So it's kind of it's way it's way more multidimensional than just having like the one trajectory of coming up with the design. In order to have a quality thesis project, you have to pick something that's going to be challenging enough. And these architectural thesis projects, people typically like when they they do more than just try to do a building. It's, it's not just about putting shelter over somebody's head. We can do that. It's about making something. It's about going above and beyond with that. It's about making it artistic. And not only making it artistic, but can you do this in a way that actually solves, like, it makes the world a better place in a way. And that might sound hokey, but that's pretty much the challenge of, a, of an architectural thesis. Your bachelor's programs, typically, across all of college, your bachelor's programs are typically about harvesting information. You study things, you regurgitate them, you write essays, you pick multiple choice question answers. In your master's degrees, it's more about synthesizing ideas, right? To get a graduate in a graduate program, it's more like taking some of the thoughts of the most brilliant leaders within your field and combining those together to kind of make sense and synthesizing these things into something that's kind of new. But then to do a, to do a doctorate is really like you do your research and you eventually like create something and give add something to the discourse. So bachelor's is like harvesting, master's is like synthesis, doctorate is like producing new stuff. In an architectural thesis for a bachelor's thesis, um, you actually get elements of all three of those. Um, architecture from its very nature is more than just harvesting information. As you go throughout studio, you really have to be doing uh, master's type thinking when or graduate level thinking when you're creating a new building right and this is because making a building is real different coming up with something brand new is different than answering multiple choice question tests or writing essays about ideas that someone else already knows and they're just trying to see how well you know it to do something brand new is really what kind of the call is and so to do your bachelor's your bachelor's thesis in architecture is really very much pulled towards the goal of the doctorate program, which is to create something new. And on the one hand, this kind of sounds ridiculous, but if you kind of think about it, like there have been people in like recent history that, well, obviously modern school systems is recent history, but look at someone like Philip Johnson and uh, the, glass the glass house that he did for, for his thesis project. That's actually one of the canonical pieces of architecture, of modern architecture. Look at Moshi Softy, who I, I don't remember, I think, I think um, Habitat Montreal, which is one of my favorite buildings, was part of his thesis project. If it wasn't his thesis, it was like, um, maybe something he came up with when he was really young and like fresh out of school. But nonetheless, like the idea that you as a young person can actually contribute something new to the discourse is not that unheard of. To pick your thesis project, 
picking the thesis topic is generally a big point of discussion the year before fifth year. Um, I know that in my class, in our school, we had like a whole class that was kind of about thesis topics, how you, thesis prep, we called it. And I'm just gonna give you like kind of two, two short ideas that I, that I had, and I'm gonna tell you why one of them was better than the other one. The one that, one idea that I thought of was for my thesis project, tackling how do you design a building, and I was gonna pick like a certain type of building probably, but like how do you design a building around an aging population? That was one that I felt like it was important to society and it was beneficial and it was a topic I was considering. However, like I, I have loved ones who fall into this category and I, I've dealt with my grandfather aging and the, the, the stress and the strain of having to get around with somebody who's not entirely mobile. And, but even though, even that, like it wasn't for me, it was for someone else. And while that's very noble, the point of doing your thesis can be selfish. And so I'm gonna tell you one of my other ideas that it, it really struck a chord with me and annoyed me a lot more, this other problem, because it was right in my face and it bothered me a lot. I was at a, I went to school at a school called Southern Polytechnic State University. And it's kind of a small camp, kind of a small, it was a small college outside of Atlanta. It wasn't like a big university with a football team and lots of girls and lots of people and parties and things going on. It wasn't fun. Like there wasn't a social life. And add to that the fact that I was always locked up in studio. The truth is that probably helped my grades a lot. So I, in hindsight, I try not to complain about that, but at the time it really bothered me that I felt like I wanted to get out of my small town I went to high school at and I wanted to be at some big university with lots of people and escape from like the boringness of, this, of like the little suburban town I grew up in and I landed in another suburb for the for college. And I was really annoyed at like the lack of social life on my campus. Point is, um, this meant a lot to me and so I thought about the idea of, okay, well how could you change that in a school setting where you could provide like a social space for people to actually go and socialize at. So in creating the space, it, it, it tied into with it a bunch of other issues like the, for example, the issue of collaboration, right? We're finding ourselves down at a time in within the narrative of history where we are becoming more connected. I can sit here and right now and talk to this video camera and you can hear it wherever you are and we can share these ideas, we can have these conversations and it, because it's easier to communicate in the real world, in the workforce, it's allowing people to become even more specialized and but also in a different way because they have to be able to be kind of well-rounded enough that they can even have conversations with other people about their field and so that architects and civil engineers, construction management people can all conversate together and tap each other for ideas and that is how innovation can happen, right? It's through being integrated with all these other mindsets, right? We have this idea in architecture of, um, of uh, cross-disciplinary, po cross-pollination of ideas, right? That became a major thing that was, became a centerpiece for my thesis. I ended up choosing this as my thesis project. And my, my, my the, the advisor for, the teacher for the thesis prep class, um, he explained to me that like, look, the, picking the thing about aging an aging demographic is very noble, but if you're more excited about the other one, this is your project that you're gonna spend a year doing, you should go with the one that's gonna be more exciting because when it's when you're tired and you don't feel like doing it and you're kind of worn out, it's gonna be when you are actually like really when it when it really annoys you that this that there's this problem and it affects you viscerally, personally, on a deep level, that's what's gonna help you to make a good project because you're going to have the passion for the project and you're going to be able to focus on it. So it was kind of a selfish move for me to do that, but in a way I feel like I did a better project than I probably would have been able to do had I chosen the other topic. So when you're choosing your topic, find something that you care deeply about. I kind of advise you if you don't know what, you're, if you're looking to, to find a thesis topic and you don't know what to do, I would advise you to spend some time thinking about the stuff that really annoys you. The stuff that really gets you bothered and pissed off, like dive into that and think about what that is. Tussle with those ideas and see if there's any way that you think architecture can minimize that pain for people or fix it and eradicate it. If there's anything that the built environment or the, the people who have the sort of connections and the ability to do what architects do, 
in the built environment, right? If we can, with the built environment, change or, or impact this thing that annoys you, I think that's a good place to start for finding yourself a thesis, to, uh, a thesis topic. Okay, so I've rambled on about this enough. I hope that this helps you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you enjoyed it. And in the comments down below, I want you to, to explain briefly your thesis topic. If you have done a thesis, or you're thinking about it, or you're doing it now, uh, let, let us know what those are down below. I think this would be a great place to kind of have a database of possibilities, because sometimes if you don't know what to do and you're trying to find something, it helps just to see some other people's ideas. And that might help spark something where you say, well, okay, I, I kind of like this, but I think it should be different. And I, I've tried searching for lists like these online. I haven't found anything that I felt like helped me very much. So maybe we could make one here that would strike a chord with somebody. So don't forget to leave those comments down below. And also don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you enjoyed it. I hope this helps, and I will talk to you next time.